Hello again accounting students. Um, in this video we are looking at our Unit 9 Section 4 assignment, Journalizing Adjusting Entry for Uncollectible Accounts. So what an uncollectible account is, um, say we own our business and we've made sales to some of our customers on account and then some of those customers end up not being able to pay us for whatever reason. Maybe um, you know they just ran out of funds and or filed bankruptcy and they couldn't pay us the amount that they owed us so um, we have to account for those uh, lack of payments um, as uncollectible funds so I wanted to look at your text here for a little bit just to explain some things for you um, so a lot of what we look at is the direct write-off method for uncollectible accounts and how that works is say we have our um, we had our sale made to let's see if they give us okay so they ha they have an example here with Robinson so he made a sale to Robinson for $530 and then Robinson comes to us and says I'm so sorry I cannot pay you right now or maybe I cannot pay you ever so um, for whatever reason again there's uh, refer to your text they kind of talk about some different reasons for why they might not be able to pay us but so then we need to account for those um, lack of payments so we have our un this is where our uncollectible accounts expense account comes in so you'll see it's an expense account so we are increasing on the debit side and decreasing on the credit side and so since we are not able to receive that amount, that that um, that turns out to be an expense for our company because we're having to foot the bill then for that customer. So that turns into an expense for our company. So we're going to have to increase that expense account. So then we're all also going to have to make the recording in our accounts receivable that we won't be receiving that amount of money from Robinson. So we end up then decreasing his accounts receivable by $530. So you'll see here that they're doing it in the subsidiary account. So Robinson's specific accounts receivable account. And then also it affects our accounts receivable controlling account. So we have to record it in both places there. And then you'll see this is the journal entry for that transaction. Again, we debited our um, accounts expense, uncollectible accounts expense, and then credited those two accounts receivable accounts. And so this just shows you then recording those transactions into the general ledger. Again, we are crediting that accounts receivable, so that changes our overall balance. And um, we're this should be a debit to our uncollectible accounts expense, which they show here in the balance. And again, this is um, the subsidiary account for Robinson. <coughs> so we are crediting that account to show that he then doesn't owe us that amount anymore. And then on the next page, I believe this is it. Yep. OK, so say then um, Robinson finally comes back to us saying um, he can he can pay that amount. So um, I know it says $520 here, but it, he actually did pay us the full $530. So now we have to kind of reverse the transaction that we just made so that we can record it correctly as an accounts receivable and um, cash deposit. So how we would do that is we basically, um, like I said, we just reverse that transaction. So then we want to um, debit our accounts receivable again, showing that he can owe that money. And so our accounts receivable controlling and our subsidiary account for Robinson. And then we're also going to then take that money out of our expense account because it's, it actually is going to get paid. So we don't have to record it as an expense anymore. So then down here is where they show you the journal entry of debiting our accounts receivable again and crediting our uncollectible expense account. So then what the next step would be, and I don't, they don't actually show you. Um, 
so since we reinstated that $530 into our accounts receivable and he actually paid us then, then we would, um, after we received the payment, we would then credit our accounts receivable again and then debit our cash. But they don't actually take you through that step here, um, which is unfortunate. But that's how the next step would be then to, um, so we need to debit that account saying he he is going to pay this 530 and then once he's paid it credit that account again showing that he's paid it and then it would also debit our cash account so that's how the um, uncollectible expense account works and what they talk about next is um, larger companies they kind of go they go ahead if you if they have a lot of customers that are purchasing on accounts they go ahead and um, just kind of plan for the fact that they probably will have some customers that won't be able to pay for whatever reason. So they plan ahead for this and set some money aside in an allowance for uncollectible accounts. So again, they're planning ahead just in case this happens with uh, a customer not being able to pay and they have this, they put money aside in this allowance so that they can go ahead and cover it and um, it still goes in to that expense account, um, but it's it's not like a since the company's already planning for it, they're not really as um, shocked, I guess you could say, <laughs> by by the fact that they're not getting paid. So um, we are going to, and this is what the allowance account looks like. So this is a contra account. <coughs> excuse me to accounts receivable. So again, it's going to be set up kind of opposite of what accounts receivable would look like. So we're increasing on our credit side <clears throat> and decreasing on, on our debit side. So in our assignment, <clears throat> excuse me, wow. Um, in part one, basically what we're doing is he's kind of, um, well, let's just read it. Williams Card Shop is planning to expand, and before it expands, the owner wants to review the uncollectible accounts. Williams asks you to calculate the percentage of uncollectible accounts per year. So maybe he wants to kind of, he's going to expand, so he's going to be starting to run a larger business. So now he wants to kind of, maybe he wants to start creating that allowance account and look for, on average, how much he's not receiving per year so that he can knows what to set aside for this allowance account. So right now though, he just wants to know what percentage um, he's uncollecting or he's not able to collect per year. So how we find the percentage is we just divide our uncollectible accounts by um, our uncollectible amount by our net sales. So that is, and I always like to use formulas because it's really easy. So you can go ahead and punch this formula in so we just want to do an equal sign and take our 800 divided by our 23,000 and that gives us 3.478%. So you can go ahead and figure that amount for each of the remaining cell, um, cells to find out what percent of our sales we're not collecting each year. So this one's pretty easy. We just kind of do some simple math to find the percentage. And then in part two, we need to actually determine our net sales, and then we want to. Then it gives us the percentage for us to figure out how much we did, we were unable to collect um, that with that company. So to figure out our net sales, we need to look at our total sales and then subtract out whatever we allowed for a discount and then what they had for sales returns and allowances. So again, I like to use a trusty formula. I'm going to say equals, I want to find my sales, I want to subtract I want to have my sales, this is the formula up here, so it shows my sales, cell C16, minus whatever um, my sales discount plus my sales returns equals. So I want to find that total first, that's why I have it in parentheses, and then I subtract that from what my 
total sales is to find my net sales. So I have net sales of $140,001. So then you can go ahead and do that formula for each of these cells down here. You can just either drag down this um, handle right here to just copy that cell that formula down through the rest of your cells. And then we need to find the we have our percentage of what was uncollected. Now we need to find the actual amount of what was uncollected. So we need to take our net sales times our how much percentage of net sales that was uncollected. So we take cell F16 times our percentage and that gives us $2,800 that we were unable to collect or I should say we, Andrew's company, <laughs> was unable to collect from its um, credit customers. So again we can just drag that formula down to see what each company was unable to collect. And then we look at our next step, we need to record the adjusting entry into our journal for those two accounts for Davis Incorporated. So we're just looking at Davis Incorporated's numbers here. So what we what it wants us to do is do adjustments for the uncollectible accounts and for the allowance. So we have this $1,282.40. So in our journal, if you remember, um, our, it's going to increase both of these accounts. And our expense account increases on the debit side, so we're going to list that one first. And then our credit is going to be this allowance. Okay, so you need to put in the correct debit and credit amounts for Davis Incorporated. And that is all there is to it for um, this assignment. Let me know if you have any questions.